Modern culture has, in fact, systemically disordered our musical practices. It's not the result of some vicious conspiracy, but it's a consequence of a host of cultural developments. And that disordering in the culture around us prevents us from perceiving the fullest capacities of music. Uh, I have been known to say that Americans are as confused about music as they are about sex and for the same reasons, um, which sometimes draws a puzzled look from people, but uh, I, I, maybe it is puzzling to you. I hope it becomes clear why I think that. Fourth, the disordering of our musical practices does have resonance, as, as my quip suggests, or analogy with other everyday disorders. And I particularly I isolate sexuality, language, and food uh, as, as other practices that, that uh, I think, uh, because of the way they're configured in our lives, conceal uh, the, the, the kind of things that they are and the kinds of things we should learn from them. It's obvious Americans are confused about the meaning of sex. Um, the cultural forces that have misguided our engagement with the gifts of food and language uh, also have similar effects with our engagement with music. I think all four of these things, language, food, sex, and music, are gifts of God that orient us bodily uh, when pursued thoughtfully and fittingly toward God, toward creation, toward our communities, and toward our own created identity. Jargon and propaganda corrupts our experience of language. Convenience and commodification spoil our perception of the meaning of food. Pornography hooking up and the exaltation of preference pervert our understanding of sexuality. And so a very similar set of cultural forces has cut us off from the communicative power, the nourishment, and the beauty that's available in music. Not only are there intriguing likenesses among these four sets of disordered practices, I believe when one is disordered, the others uh, are often affected. Christians worry a lot about disordered sex, and for good reason, but sexuality is part of a bigger ecosystem in which various practices are mutually engaged. All four of these spheres deal with, as I've suggested, how we're oriented in creation and with one another. All four are involved with our understanding of and pursuit of desire. All four are used in scripture as metaphors for some aspects of our relationship with God, and not just metaphors, by using the tongue lovingly in speech, by accepting food as a gift, by honoring the relationship between Christ and the church in marital fidelity, and by experiencing harmony, both literally and figuratively, our communion with God and with his people are enabled, and to corrupt one of these is to weaken all of them. 